anguish over the mass shootings in Uvalde, Texas, and Buffalo, New York, is behind the push for new gun control measures in the United States. A compromise bill is now over a first hurdle in the Senate. Some Republicans joined Democrats and their allies in voting for it last night in a procedural vote. And let's find out more about all of this. Chris Glover is in Washington in our bureau reporting on this for us this morning. These gun control measures, Chris, that were worked out by some Senate Democrats and Republicans, a rare bipartisan effort. Tell us more about what is in this legislation. Well, it's not everything that Democrats had wanted, but in order to get that compromise and get Republicans to buy in, um, they had to whittle down some of their demands. So 14 Republicans joining Democrats to vote in favor of moving forward with this. And that included Republican leader in the Senate, Mitch McConnell, who said that the bill would make, uh, you know, those recent horrifying mass shootings in Uvalde and Buffalo that you just mentioned less likely. And the legislation would also break a three-decade long stalemate over federal gun control in America. So let's walk through some of the major points. Give up to 10 business days to background check uh, gun buyers under the age of 21. It would also direct millions of dollars to the states to implement red flag laws and also send a lot of money for things like mental health. And it would allow authorities to confiscate guns from people deemed dangerous. And then finally, it would tackle the so-called boyfriend loop and include dating partners in barring domestic abusers from purchasing firearms. And this is something that gun safety advocates have fought for for years. Here's Democratic leader in the Senate, Chuck Schumer. While it's not everything we want, this legislation is urgently needed. I'm pleased that for the first time in nearly 30 years, Congress is back on the path to take meaningful action to address gun violence. So the compromise does not include things like banning assault weapons that many Democrats had called for, but even pro-gun control groups, Heather, like Every Town for Gun Safety and the NAACP have said that this is an important step for America. 14 Republicans, as you mentioned, Chris, voted for the bill, but most Republican senators are against it. Why is the opposition remaining to these gun control measures, even in the aftermath of Uvalde and Buffalo, Chris? Well, it continues to be that Second Amendment that we're hearing from Senate Republicans who opposed the bill, along with the National Rifle Association releasing a statement just yesterday saying that the bill infringes on that constitutional right. And Republican John Cornyn has also faced a lot of opposition here. The Texas senator has been at the center of this bill's negotiations since Uvalde, Texas, and what happened there. And I want you to watch what happened this past weekend at his party's convention in Texas. My friends, that's what I try to do every day on your behalf in Washington, D.C. Sometimes my job is pretty simple. Sometimes my job is... Shouted down and booed there, but he remained defiant and last night calling on the memory of the mass shooting at that elementary school in Uvalde, Texas, and the gunman, Salvador Ramos. We know there's no such thing as a perfect piece of legislation. We are imperfect human beings, but we have to try. And I believe this bill is a step in the right direction. So our goal is with this legislation is to try to help people in crisis get treatment before they reach a point like Salvador Ramos. Now we'll be watching Heather for a final vote on the bill in the Senate, likely by the end of this week. And then it would go to the House where Speaker Nancy Pelosi says she would swiftly call a vote. And President Biden has said that he would sign any gun reform bill that hits his desk. Chris, thank you very much. Chris Glover in Washington.